Okay, as I'm sure you figured out by now, I spend lots of time in front of a computer screen. And after lots of research on Amazon, couldn't find a keyboard that was split and could also be extended via a standard cable. And then I came across the ErcoDox. And I spent a lot of money on this keyboard. But I decided that, that was worth it for my for my back. So I decided to go all out with the glow and the wrist rest and the tilt. The whole nine yards. Okay. So here's the main keyboard itself. Set that off to the side. Here is wing and wrist rest. Start here. Ooh. Ooh, nice and heavy rubber. Stress are really nice and high quality, but I would have expected the tilt kit to be in there too. So here we go. Let's uh, open this. Ta da! Oh, okay. The tilt kit's already installed on it. Awesome. Okay. So go ahead and lift the fancy plastic cover, and oh, I have to know what these switches feel like. Went with Kale Blacks, and I gotta say, that's an, an, uh, an immediate approval. They sound very good. I kind of feel like a hacker. Now, also came with a switch, or a key puller, keycap puller. And looks like a couple O-rings and spare keys for the F and J keys. Interesting. And a spare blank. And then there's nothing else in here. So we'll put the lid back on this the way it was. And we'll go ahead and pull the cables out. So obviously it's made short because they think you're going to use it on a, on a desk. Oh, I'm a... Uh, I was expecting that to sound a little better, considering, and hold a little better too, wow. I, mean, I guess the idea is that it's supposed to be tightened? Yeah, okay, that's why. You're supposed to find where you like it and then tighten it. I haven't quite figured out where I want it yet. flat and uh, connect it to a laptop here. Pretty long USB cable. Nice of them to include that. Now, which half is the USB connection on? Okay, it's on the right half. Plug it in here. Ooh, ooh, we've got some glow to it. That's pretty nice. Very strange. Not sure of the layout at all. I thought that was backspace. This is backspace. That's toggling caps. No, that's toggling num lock. This, ooh, there's spacebar. Okay, spacebar is on my left hand. Is uh, both hands. Ooh, okay. So I'm gonna have to spend some time with this and really get accustomed to it. But I will close this with saying, I am, oops, capable. Oops. of typing on the 
ergodox. So the two biggest barriers I see with this is that because of the ortholinear layout, the keys are just ever so slightly in a different place. So that's going to take some time for me to get used to. Uh, I am worried about switching back to a traditional keyboard after getting used to this. And I'm also worried about memorizing all these blank keys, but they're configurable and they're mod keys anyway, so they're always switching. So I'm going to have to find a manual and figure out how to use this keyboard, but other than that, I am majorly impressed with how these switches feel. Let's very nice, very nice. The switches feel nice, and since this half is unplugged, I'm not worried about pulling a, pulling a, a switch now. Aha, there you go. you got to get it really in there and then pinch on the inside. And, aha, the switch just pulls right out. Let's see if they get points with being compatible with these purples I impulse bought a few years ago. And they do indeed, once oriented correctly, have the same exact click pins. So I'm going to have fun trying out these purples too. Boom. In just a couple minutes, I managed to swap out one of the switches for a purple. Now I can finally know how these feel. Eighty words per minute that time. Okay, so I've had the Ergodox now for about 24 hours, and I replaced my Razer Black Widow, which I didn't really like that keyboard anyway. I'm really a fan of smaller, more compact keyboards. So I replaced the Razer Black Widow at my desk with it, and it's been okay. I'm still adjusting. The hardest part for me is remembering where the equal sign is. The equal sign is on the right keyboard. Uh, I believe it's the right bracket key. Right bracket key is equal sign. And a lot of the other symbols that are on the uh, number keys have moved to other spots on the keyboard. Now, okay, I could just make my own config and stop complaining. But, first of all, I'm running Linux, so don't know how I'm going to do that with their configurator software. I could try a VM, my Mac VM that I'm running in QAMU. Um, or I could just learn this layout. And if after a few weeks of learning this layout, I'm still not happy with it, then I'll look into creating my own. But I plan to come back to this with a full length review. I just wanted to give you guys my first impressions after using it for 24 hours. And today I'm going to try and actually do some work with it. Yesterday was just typing tests and whatever I could do to try and get used to it. Let's try and get some work done with it today. And until next time, guys, I'll see you. Oh, one more thing. I've got another thing coming for Duelist of the Roses soon. It's going to be the card creator, and that's in the future going to be the modding tool that lets you add custom cards to the game. I'm releasing it early now so that I can get some help with um, defining cards, card definitions, custom cards, and cards that were original to Duelist of the Roses. Really, I want to get the I want to get the first pool of Duelist of the Roses cards in before I start adding in and bundling custom cards with the game. But we will be getting there eventually, and the tool is coming along pretty well, so stay tuned for that. And if you haven't checked out the blog post on the tool already, you might want to do that. I'll try and remember to link that below. Until next time, peace.